Hi everyone, welcome to Supercomputing 2023. Full disclosure, Supermicro has paid for as part of our board and lodging here at the show this year, but I'm at their booth because they've got some AMD systems you guys should know about. Now, people may not realize, but when AMD first did first generation Epic, second generation Epic, of course, people were still a bit jaded from the Optron era. Only a few companies decided, only a few OEMs decided to pick them up as part of their line. I remember going to companies like Supermicro here saying, what's your uh, AMD uh, protocol here? What, what's gonna be the plan? And they said, you know, we're, we're all in. They were one of the first to have some of their A series uh, designs in the market. And what we have here is the latest generation. Let's start off with this big 2U. So what we're dealing here is with Genoa X. This is for high performance compute with lots of additional vCache. Now in true Supermicro fashion, the name is a bit long-winded. It's the AS2025 HS TNR. We'll put that along the screen. Um, but what we have here is two of the vCache Genua X models. So we're talking about 1.1 gigabytes of L3 cache for high performance compute. Now, what are these CPUs actually good for? I mean, we have the standard compute models. Um, lots of people are asking for memory, sort of gigabytes and gigab uh, terabytes of memory in terms of DRAM. So additional cache here is playing very well in CFD, that's uh, computational fluid dynamics, in HPC, high performance computing. We are at supercomputing after all. And then also things like EDA, electronic design, uh, automation, you know, designing chips. What Supermicro have got with this system is your standard uh, you know, dual socket design, because uh, Geno X supports dual socket. Um, you know, obviously front, away, front array of uh, three and a half inch drives this time. Uh, we actually saw a 100 terabyte, three and a half inch drive over there uh, uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, so let's fill it up with that uh, and get petabytes of storage in this thing. And then at the back, you have space for a number of uh, dual slot GPUs. I think it's uh, at least three or four. Yeah, four PCA 5 by 16 slots at the back if you wanted to add in additional GPU compute. So what you're dealing with here is uh, a compute solution that does both CPU and do GPU pretty darn uh, well. Now, if we take a look inside, actually, and we'll show some B-roll of me actually getting my hands in here, um, you'll notice that this is one of the systems we've shown in the show with additional shrouds in. Normally for a show, they take the shrouds out. Um, but what a shroud does is it helps direct airflow, especially over uh, the CPU and the memory. These are gonna be air cooled. They don't have the heat sinks on. You can just see that plain, that big SP5 AMD socket here. And the idea is to go all the way through. Now, those of you from the consumer space will think that's a, that's a small amount of VRMs. But the point is these aren't overclocking systems. Um, they're just high performance. They're gonna be uh, used you know, full on, day in, day out inside supercomputers. What I wanted to highlight here is, I've highlighted it in another video, but I'll say it again. We're seeing a revival in terms of CPU only supercomputers, supercomputers that don't use accelerators. And they're actually becoming very efficient in terms of their actual flops versus peak flops. Um, so we're seeing a number of systems on the top 500 this year just be CPU only. And it's essentially designs like this that they can deploy at scale doing that for them. So alongside the 2U, there's also the, the 1U version. So if you need a little bit of density here, um, they also do this you know, in, in the AMD design. Again, we're talking about dual socket Genoa, maybe even Genoa X. There's space for a couple of um, accelerators at the back and obviously advanced networking. Um, you do get less storage here. It's obviously not as accessible as the previous design. It's actually built in. Um, but you know, inside this design, you're still, again, looking at terabytes of memory uh, with Genoa X and accelerators. This one, again, has the uh, name of AS1125HS TNR. In terms of power consumption in a 1U, you've got to think, you know, if you've got two CPUs and two GPUs at the back. So this has, you know, dual redundant 1200 watt uh, titanium power supplies. Uh, you can go up to 1600 watts if you're really pushing the limits. This is air-cooled, so this goes into your air-cooled system. Um, I believe Supermicro are working on you know, liquid cooled versions as well. Uh, but in terms of being a long time support partner of AMD, um, Supermicro have been there since the start of Epic and they're really trying to showcase that here this year. Um, I mean, everybody else is on board with uh, Epic now as well. Uh, but these guys are known for doing their fast iterative designs and making sure that customers get what they want. So whether that's something simple like the, uh, the high density 1U or the more, you know, more accelerator focused 2U here with additional storage on the front, they've got you covered. My main specification here is I would love a rack of these. Come on Supermicro, how much? One of the benefits for Supermicro having that long-term partnership with AMD is that when it comes to new standards, they're usually one of the first to help support it in their systems. These two systems here, 
uh, Supermicro list is supporting CXL 1.1, technically 1.1 plus, because that's what Genoa supports. And what we're looking at here is the next generation of connectivity, whether it's uh, host to device, device to device, or system to system. So if you need a CXL enabled platform, Supermicro will help build that for you. So another factor here is a high density compute. Um, this system isn't the newest that they're showing off at the show, um, but it is one of the highest density compute options that they offer. Again, a typical fashion, this is the AS4124 GQ TNMI, um, but inside you've got MI250s uh, and high density MI250s. It's a very similar you know, unified baseboard design, so you can have eight of these additional NVMe storage on the front and, and CPUs. What we have here is AMD's uh, Instinct MI250X. Now when this video is going out, I know a lot of you are gonna be uh, shouting to me, Ian, what about MI300? What about MI300X especially, the one that's actually got all the GPU stuff in it? I'm being told to wait and see, which usually means yes, but they're not confirming that. Um, we're ex we're, AMD's got their event December 6th. I'll be there, I'll hopefully be doing a lot of content out of there. Um, but it's sort of this sort of system we're gonna be seeing en masse being shipped to customers in HPC um, and in machine learning. So I'm really excited <laughs> for, for what AMD's got to show. Um, next year, they said they're all in with AI and machine learning. It's gonna be systems like this that help deliver it. So what's my minimum specification here? Well, let's see if I can take this. Oh God, that's heavy. Uh, make it lighter, please. Actually, 